So the burette sorted now, we can move on to the measurement of base, measuring out the base. So we've got sodium hydroxide again. I've poured it out from the bottle into a labelled beaker and it was obviously clean to start with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pipette now. This is a 25 cm cubed pipette and I'm going to measure out 25 cm cubed into the pipette. So we need to use a pipette filler. So holding the, the pipette near the top, don't hold it near the bottom, otherwise you, you run the risk of, of snapping it. Don't ram it on, just gently put that on so you've got a seal, because you're gonna be able to get this off quite easily, and I'll show you that in a second. Using the thumb wheel, we're gonna draw up, a bit like a straw, we're gonna draw up the liquid, and we're going to measure it out 25 cm cubed. I've obviously cleaned this in advance of this stage with the, um, the solution already. I just wanted to show you how to use this. If you run out of suction, in other words, the plunger gets at the top, you don't, you don't need to take it off. Just put your thumb over here, press that in, and then push that down again. We're coming up to the potentially tricky part now. The zero line's there. I'm going to run it to about there. You'll, again, you'll see why. Here we go. And what I need to do is I need to get this off quickly and get my thumb over and stop the meniscus. So I'm my thumb will control the meniscus like that. I'll just put it under that hand so you can see a bit better. So the zero is there. The meniscus is there at the moment. Using our thumb very carefully, we're running the meniscus down so that it sits on that line. So we'll do that now. This takes a bit of getting used to, but once you get the hang of it, it's absolutely fine. So we're just dripping back into there. You might want to get to eye level so that you can see exactly when the meniscus hits that line. There it is. I'll just bring that closer to the camera so you can see. So focused there. Absolutely perfect. And then that is going into our clean conical flask. So it's stopped dripping out now. There's a tiny amount of the sodium hydroxide in the jet. So what you do is you just touch the opening of the jet onto the liquid and it draws that last bit out. So that's done. That goes back in the stand. So it's out of your way. Indicator time, remember this is phenolphthalein. I'm going to add about five drops of this to the flask, and this is going to help us to know when the reaction is finished. And you can see it's got a nice bright pink colour. So we're ready to do our first titration, it's the trial titration. The meniscus is exactly on zero, we've recorded it in our table. We've got the burette at a nice comfortable level for our height and we're ready to go. So you can see the jet there of the burette, it's about a centimetre, a couple of centimetres in. So we're not going to spill anything over the, uh, the, the side of the flask and we'll start. So with the trial titration, what you do is you add one cubic centimetre at a time and then stop and swirl. Still pink. Add another centimetre cubed and swirl, still pink. Add another centimetre cubed and swirl. And you just keep doing that. I'll show you when uh, you would stop. If you think you've dripped some of the um, solution from the bureau, if it's gone down the side of your conical flask, in other words, it's not in, in with the uh, rest of the liquid, you just need to just rinse the side of that with your distilled water and that will run any of the uh, chemicals into the flask. Now you're not changing the number of moles in there so that's absolutely fine to do that. So we're going to keep on adding until something happens. So I'm on 22 now, it's still pink. We'll put another one in. 23 now, oh, still pink. Is it ever going to go? 24. 
it's gone. Right, so that means that the end of this titration is somewhere between 23 and 24. So what we need to do first of all is record the burette reading for this trial titration. So I just want to show you that close up. You can see the meniscus, sorry about the shaking, is exactly on the first line after the 24. So that's 24.10. So you can see I've got all the results in now for the trial. So the initial reading was 0, 0.00. The final reading is 24.10. And so that means the titra, that's how much we've used from the burette, is obviously the difference between the two. That's 24.10. So I've filled the burette up for the second titration. So this is going to be our first accurate one. And you can see there the meniscus is just below the 2.7 line. So that will be recorded as 2.75. The reason I've done that is because I want to make the point you don't have to start at 0, 0.00. As long as you know where you start, you can always work out the difference. So I'm ready to start the second titration now. Remember that's the first accurate titration. We know roughly where the end point is. It's 24.1 we got from our trial. So the burette's ready to go at that 2.75. I've got my um, sodium hydroxide in the conical flask with the indicator in, you see it's pink. So because I know that the end point is roughly somewhere between 20, 23 and just over 24 cm cubed, I'm going to add 23, 22 centimetres cubed straight away and then I'm going to go really slowly and um, make sure we catch that one drop that, that changes the indicator's colour. You can see, I can see flashes of the clear solution. It's nearly gone. We've got about one drop every couple of seconds. I'm in total control here. I'm looking for the totally colourless and gone. So we caught that very, very drop there that changed the indicator to colourless. So we'll just have a look at where the burette's at now and record it on our table and um, then we'll do another accurate one. So you can see there the meniscus is exactly on the 26 mark there. So we can safely say that that burep reading is 26.00. So there's the results table with the new information on. And you can see that the titra for the first accurate experiment is coming out at 23.25. So what I'm going to do now is do another accurate experiment and we'll get hopefully exactly the same titra but we need to be within 0 0.10 of that ideally so you can see i've done a second accurate titration and i've got um, a titra now of 23.15 so that's within the 0 0.10 so we call those concordant results so i'm going to use these two in the calculation of the mean. A good idea is to start the results that you're going to use. So obviously I'm using these two here. We don't use the trial. The mean titer is always quoted to one decimal place. OCR insist on that. I'm not sure about other exam boards. So we've got a mean titer of 23.2 centimetres cubed. If this titration result had been, you know, too different, so if it had been, say, 0.2 centimetres cubed away or 0.3, you would simply just do another titration and hopefully you would get a better result. So we'll do the number crunching now. We've got the chemical equation there for the reaction that's taking place in the titration. So we knew the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. So I'll put a little tick next to that. That's our known substance. And the unknown substance with the question mark underneath is the sodium hydroxide. And that's what we need to calculate the concentration for. So the first thing we'll do is work out the moles of hydrochloric acid 
that were involved in the experiment. So the moles of hydrochloric acid is calculated by multiplying the concentration by the volume. So there's the concentration, 1.0. The volume, remember, must be in cubic decimeters. So 23.2 centimeters cubed was our average titra. In decimeters cubed, that's 0 0.0232. Remember, you divide by 1,000 to turn centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed. So, obviously, the moles are 0 0.0232. The moles of the unknown chemical now, so the moles of the sodium hydroxide, well that's obviously going to be the same because it's a one to one mole ratio in this balanced equation. So the moles of HCl equal the moles of sodium hydroxide. And remember the sodium hydroxide that we used was measured out in that 25 centimetre cube pipette. So these moles were present in 25 centimetres cubed. So to turn that into a concentration, we have to take the moles, the number of moles, and divide that by the volume that they're in. So 0 0.0232 moles in 0 0.025 of a decimeter cubed is equivalent to 0 0.93 to two decimal places moles per decimeter cubed. We'll finish off the video by looking at the percentage error in our answer. So all of the apparatus that we've used to measure out substances, so that's the pipette and the burette in this case, they have some error associated in their measurement. And that would normally be stamped on the side of the apparatus. So this is the pipette I used in the experiment. And you can see stamped on the bottom there, a plus or minus 0 0.06. So what that means is that 25 millilitres that we measured out in the experiment could be that much too high or that much too low. So the formula we use to calculate the percentage error is the error divided by the measured amount multiplied by 100. So I've just plugged the numbers into the formula. Percentage error equals error over measured times 100. So 0 0.06 was the error. 25 was measured, times 100 gives us a, a percentage error of 0.24%. And here's the burette that I used in the titration. And you can just see, stamped at the bottom there, this plus minus 0 0.05. And hopefully you can appreciate that the error here is half of the division that the burette measures to. So burettes measure... 0 0.1 centimetres cubed each time and the error is half of that. Now for the error in the mean titra we need to think about how it was obtained. It was obtained by taking two measurements with the burette, the initial and the final burette reading. Each of those will have their, will have the 0 0.05 cm cubed error in and so the error in the titra is actually 0 0.1 centimetres cubed because we've used the burette effectively twice in the measurement of the titra. So we double the error. And that's coming out as a 0.43% error in that 23.2 average titra. Now because they were the only pieces of apparatus that we took any measurements with, our total error is just the sum of those two uh, percentages so that's coming out at a total percentage error of 0.67%. Obviously, if a balance had been involved in the practical, then I would have worked out the percentage error in the mass measurement, and that would have obviously had to have been added on to the other errors.